Greetings, brothers and sisters of the Remnant Church. I'm Brother Elvin Bridges, once again, of Living Man and Ministries, and we welcome you back to our webinar series here entitled, Out of the Cities, The Threequel, An Appeal to Parents to Leave the City. Now, this is night number four, and the title of this evening's presentation is Rate That Country Property. Now, what we're going to do tonight is take our camera lens, and we're going to go through five properties that are for sale in and around the United States. And the reason we do that is because we want to give you an indication, an idea, a better understanding of exactly what God is asking us to do as far as how we look for, how we search for, and the criteria involved in the biblical and spirit of prophecy 
counsel, and it is very clear counsel indeed. So we'd love to do more than five, time won't allow, but I believe we'll get a pretty good understanding of what God is looking for based on these five properties tonight. What we do at that point is we rate them on a scale of one to ten, and very rarely, brothers and sisters, very rarely will you see a ten from Brother Bridges, very rarely. I, I judge very strictly and very harshly because, again, we have to be going by, thus saith the Lord. So every now and then you may see a nine, maybe a little more often you may see a strong eight, maybe a soft seven. Every now and then you may see a zero. It all depends on the criteria involved and what we're looking at as far as that individual or given property is concerned. But speaking of the Word of God and God's counsel, let's go to the Bible to see exactly what God is teaching us in terms of what we need to look for and how we need to look for it. First of all, let's start off in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 29. Exodus 9 and verse 29. Heavenly Father, we pray as we open these blessed, precious words of life, that you would please bless them, give us understanding and wisdom that only comes from heaven, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Exodus 9, saints, in verse 29. And the Bible declares, And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, did you get the lesson? Moses said, As soon as I am gone out of the city, going where? Of course, to the country. What is the first thing Moses is going to do once he is out of the city? Well, the Bible tells us. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord. In other words, brother, sister, in other words, put another way, he's going to give all thanks, all honor, and all glory to God for him leaving the city. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the first thing you need to do once God takes you out. Of course, God is going to be leading you out if you're faithful and trusting in him to do so. But once you get there, you can't be like the ten lepers in the Bible where Jesus healed them of leprosy and only one returned and gave Jesus thanks. And Jesus asked the eternal question, where are the nine? So we have to always give God all the thanks and all the praise when he blesses us. So let's take a look now at the template that God uses, that God wants us to use as far as our country property search is concerned. We can find that in Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah 29, let's go straight there, and God's going to talk to us through his prophet in terms of what his template is for our country living search, our country property search. What do we need to do and be looking for? And what do we need to, need to do once it is established? Jeremiah 29 and verse 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Bible says, Build ye houses. Mm. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Now there's four big big points there brothers and sisters listen carefully first he said build ye houses now a few of the properties we're going to look at this evening are in that exact category land without a home on them so many saints these days are doing that they're actually buying land and then they're taking it upon themselves with God's help of course to build a home on them so that's point number one build ye houses number two and dwell in them so of course once you build the house you're going to live in the house and set up your country outpost center. Amen. Number three, and plant gardens. You have now gone to the country, and now you're going to establish a situation where you no longer are dependent upon supermarkets per se, but you need to start planting your own garden because we're told clearly in the book Desire of Ages, page 121, paragraph three, Sister White says, in the last great conflict in the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. So we have to get to a point where we are eating our own food and we are sustaining ourselves, of course, with God's help. And eat the fruit of them. So we build a house, we live in the house, we plant a garden, and we eat the fruit that's provided in that garden. Can you say amen? So that is our template. Now let's look at that template that God has provided us in Jeremiah 29.5 in biblical practical terms also in the Bible let's go to Genesis chapter 33 now Genesis 33 and we're going to start at verse 17 our brother Jacob gives us a practical lesson in actually applying God's template in his life 
Genesis 33 and verse 17. Again, the Bible declares, And Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house. So again, we have another example of a brother in the Bible building his own house. Amen. And made booths for his cattle. And therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came to Shalem, verse 18, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram, and pitched his tent before the city. Did the Bible say in the city? No. He pitched his tent before, outside of the city. Did you get the lesson? Yes. 19. And he bought a parcel of a field. So now, after building the house, now our brother Jacob has purchased a field. Hmm. Where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for an hundred pieces of money. Verse 20, another key verse now. And he erected there an altar and called it Elelohe Israel. Now, he built a house, he bought a field to plant his garden in, and then he erected an altar. Now, what does the spirit of prophecy have to say about the altar part or portion of this verse? Well, let's read it. This is from this is from Home Missionary or The Home Missionary June 1st 1889 please listen carefully inspiration says you who love God take Jesus with you wherever you go and like the patriarchs of old erect an altar to the Lord wherever you pitch your tent just like Jacob did listen please listen if ever there was a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. And yet in this time of fearful peril, some who profess to be Christians have no family altar. I know of nothing that causes me so great sadness as a prayerless, a prayerless home. Hmm. The children show the result of this neglect, for the fear of God is not before them. Parents should make a hedge about their children by prayer. They should pray with full faith that God will abide with them and that holy angels will guard themselves and their children from Satan's cruel power. Listen, there are homes where these principles are carried out. Amen. Homes where God is worshipped and truest love reigns. From these homes, morning and evening, Prayer ascends to God as sweet incense, and his mercies and blessings descend upon the suppliants like the evening dew. So we are admonished clearly. Once we get a place, wherever we are, even if you're in a city, you should have an altar, a family altar in your home now. But particularly, once you get to the country, set that, country, that family altar up as soon as possible. So again, Brother Jacob, a practical application of the, the template given us in Jeremiah chapter 29. So how about the wisdom that's needed as far as finding your country home is concerned? Let's go to Proverbs 24. Proverbs chapter 24. And again, we're just laying a foundation before we get to our first property. Proverbs 24, and we're going to start at verse 3. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Lord, please continue to bless your words. We ask and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 24 and verse 3 in the Bible says, through wisdom is in house built it. Hmm. And by understanding it is established. And you'll find, brothers and sisters, throughout the Word of God, wisdom and understanding go together. They go hand in hand. They are firmly linked together. Firmly. Revelation 13 comes to mind. Daniel chapter 1 comes to mind and many others. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So, the house is to be built, yes. Through our own wisdom? No, brother, sister, through the wisdom of God. Let's go a step further. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. We'll stay in Proverbs, and we'll go to the chapter 24 again. 24. Proverbs 24 and verse 27. Again, a verse that we probably all know. Proverbs 24 and 27 kind of lost my place here. Please bear with me. There's a little breeze out here in the country. Amen. Same chapter, Proverbs 24 and 27. Prepare thy work without, 
and make it fit for thyself where? In the field, and afterwards, afterwards build thine house. So what is God telling us here through his servant Solomon? Well, the field is more important, isn't it? The house is important, yes. We need somewhere to dwell, somewhere to be protected from the elements, but brother, sister, we have to make sure we have somewhere to plant food to be able to eat and to be able to feed our families. That's crucial. That is crucial. So Proverbs 31 gives us a final lesson here. Same book, Proverbs 31. And we're talking about a dedication to the virtuous woman. I love Proverbs 31. It is a dedication to women, to the sisters in the faith. Amen. Proverbs 31, we're going to look at verse 16. Verse 16. And the Bible says again, she, the virtuous woman, the sister, the, the woman or sister of Zion, the mother of Zion, she considereth a field, number one, and buyeth it, number two, with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard, number three. Oh, wonderful lesson there, beautiful lesson, brothers and sisters. Let's repeat that. She considereth a field, yes, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. So, brother, sister, all we need to know is right here in the word of God. The template, the example, the admonishment, what we need to know and what we need to, to accomplish in terms of finding the property that we need to, to move into, that the Lord has impressed us to go seek out, and that once we establish it there, once we get there, we need to know exactly how to move forward to forward God's work and finish the gospel. Amen. So let's take a moment now, and let's take a look at our first property for the night. Brothers and sisters, we are in the beautiful state of Kentucky, good old Kentucky. And I'm approaching a property that is very much off the beat path. What I'm doing at this point is I'm actually starting the filming about three and a half miles before we actually get to the property. The reason I'm doing that is I want to give you some perspective on the overlying area, the outlying area, so you can get an idea not just how it feels right around the perimeter or the, maybe the, the neighboring properties up against the property that you're considering, but also to give you a wider perspective on how the general area looks, and that's very important. So right now we're approximately, as I mentioned, according to the GPS, about 3.3 miles away from the property. It is a very beautiful landscape. I'm not gonna talk so much. I'm gonna kinda of let the landscape do the talking for me. But it is a beautiful, very scenic area. Let's watch and enjoy it. reach an intersection here. I'm going to turn off the GPS here to maintain the seller's privacy. And here we go.
Beautiful country here, brother, sister. Beautiful country. Switch hands as I drive. Yes, brother, sister, this is very nice indeed. Very nice. Okay, we're getting very close now. to change hands again, excuse me. There we go. All right, here we go. Looks like somebody's building a house here, amen. I love the road already, it's gravel. It's off a road, that's off of a road, that's off of a main road. I love that. <clears throat> but the fact that this road is a gravel road tells me there's probably minimum residences on this road. I think there's actually three or four total, I was told. So this is essentially an extended driveway as far as I'm concerned. shift into four-wheel drive because I was told that there is a driveway for the home the property is actually a long driveway and it's a little steep please don't let that intimidate you Okay. Yes, yeah, definitely off the road and and well hidden. All right, here we go. Okay, Saints, let's go for a walk. Okay, let's take a walk. Now this, this property located in Kentucky is 28 acres. And, oh, I left my lights on, excuse me. It's 28 acres. And it is on rolling hills. It has pasture land, it has plenty of cleared land, and it has plenty, plenty of
trees. I believe that half the property is wooded. And I'm going to give you, show you all a plat map in just a little while. But in my opinion, brother, sister, this is a steal. It is for sale by owner, <coughs> which essentially means that there's no realtor involved. For sale by owner, 28 acres. The home is unfinished. We're going to look at the home. After we look at the outside, of course, we're told that we know that from scripture, from Proverbs 24, 27, that we should consider what's without first and also the field. And then, and then concern ourselves with thine house. So I'm going to take a little walk here. This is, this is a very nice piece of property. And it is absolutely, positively quite secluded. I know it's a long way, it is a long way off the beaten path, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to give you all the specs in a little, a little bit, a few minutes as far as distance from here, distance to there. But this is very impressive, very impressive. I'm going to walk all the way down the driveway just to give you all some perspective and I'm going to kind of turn around and you can get an idea. There's the home. Uh, again, it's unfinished. There's some work to do on that, but just to get back to, to the original point. And this home is a four bedroom. Four bedroom, two bath. Um, needs some work with the flooring. Floor needs to be sort of uh, upgraded. But the roof is done. The walls are up, need some electrical, need some plumbing, but we'll get into all that. We'll get into all that a little later. I just want you to see how nice this is. This is very, very nice. And I love the long, again, the long extended driveway. I like that. So I'm walking now down to the, the gravel road, <clears throat> which again, I like very much. That tells me right, right away that there's very, very, if any, body on this road except the people who live on this road. I've also been told by the seller, the owner, that there's one neighbor about a quarter of a mile away, maybe a little longer, another neighbor the other direction, and that both neighbors are very, very, very friendly and very nice very friendly and very nice so i'm actually on the road now walking down the road uh oh i'm being chased by two little dogs you guys see that i think i can handle them they look friendly <laughs> uh oh i'm in trouble and this is live TV. So I'm walking down the road now. All right, little fella. Uh-oh. We got a bigger one. And this is live TV. Let me get a stick. All right. I want to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Let me get something here to put in my hand. Just in case. Yeah, there they go. Okay, I knew that would work. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have to take matters into our own hands, correct? Okay, so this is the land. I'm going to pause now while I talk to this gentleman. Okay, so we're back here now walking up the road. And again, beautiful piece of property, beautiful area. And I just met 
the nearest neighbor, I'd say that's probably, I'd say from the house that's being sold, the front door to this gentleman's door is probably maybe a quarter of a mile, give or take. That's a nice distance. So all this here, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, to the right. Okay. The board over the top? Yes. All right, go from that board over the top. And then go up. It goes from the rear pole up here. Uh huh. And it goes to the board over the top. Okay. And then it comes around. Back behind the house. Right. And then you go rolling out to the Y. Okay, yeah, I've, I've seen the plaid map. So it gave me a pretty clear indication of the, uh, the layout. Okay. You saw, is it actually this electric pole here? Yep. Or this one right here? No, it's on the other side of that electric pole. Oh, past it, okay. Okay, see up one up there? Uh-huh. Towards the road? I see it, yes. It's a back on this side of it somewhere. Okay. There's three wind poles. Okay. In a, in a V like this here. Okay. By the road. Yes, sir. And it goes from them to down here to Bullo, and then around. Okay, I'm going to walk on up. Okay. I Come appreciate on, that. Thanks for your help, Donald. Yeah, God, God bless up. you and your family. Okay, so I survived the attack of the, the Chihuahuas, praise the Lord. So we're going to continue walking now, and I'm going to walk to the exact point where the property line begins. I see he has a horse over there, I don't know if you guys can see that, let me zoom in a little. Okay, and I hear another dog. That's one thing about country life, saints. Dogs are a part of the, the process. And they're necessary. Oh, it's beautiful out here, beautiful. I wish you could smell the fresh air that I'm smelling. Those of you who are living in the city right now, this air is priceless. All right, so we're continuing to walk, and I'm gonna spend a little extra time on this property because I, I really believe that this is a real, real nice deal considering what's being made available. The home again needs work to be completed, but the land, the land is spectacular. It really is. Plenty cleared and plenty, as you can see, plenty of trees for wood, for heat. It is on a well and it does have a septic. Make my way over here. Get into the grass. Let's see. So I know the property begins over yonder. And again, I'm going to show the plat map during our review and rape period. But it begins right over here, and it comes all the way across here. And I'm going to just walk through just to give you guys a taste of the beauty of this land. Now, there are some neighboring properties. So these homes, these neighboring properties, I like the distance. There's some space in between. And I really like the fact that the property that we're reviewing and rating here, 28 acres, their 28 acres, spread out and push up against these properties, this property, the next property, up near their house, as opposed to the other way around where this property may be 30 or 40 acres, and the boundary of their 40 acres comes all the way up to the home here on the 28 acres that we're trying to, that we're reviewing today. Does that make sense? So there's some, there's some separation 
that I like. There's some separation. And it is very, very, very quiet out here. I love it. I'm going to keep walking. Very quiet. And it is that time of year where the leaves are changing colors and it is magnificent. Yes, indeed. Very, very nice. Now this all here can be utilized, obviously can be utilized to start an orchard, several gardens, a farm of some type, and of course it stretches all the way back. I'm not going to walk all the way back there, but the property stretches all the way back and comes around, around behind this tree line, around these trees. Plenty of wood for heat, plenty of wood. Nice, I'm gonna start heading back toward the road. So I think that this is, this has some nice potential for somebody who may be a contractor it's definitely a fixer-upper. It's actually a fixer-finisher. I think the majority of the work has already been completed. As I mentioned earlier, it needs some electrical done, some plumbing finished off, but by and large, the major work has been completed. I said it already several times, I'm going to repeat, it's beautiful. As you can see, it is beautiful. Okay, I found a little shortcut that I'm taking, <coughs> excuse me, cutting through this little area here next to the road as I make my way back to the, the driveway. So what I'm going to do is walk back up the driveway and take a little tour around the perimeter of the house itself before we actually walk into the house, walk through the home, and wind it down. Again, I'm taking some extended time here. I want you to really get in a true appreciation of the land here and the landscape. Very nice. Okay, back on the road. And I'm walking and there is a realty sign I want you to ignore that because it is definitely for sale by owner I will come close and show you close up of the bottom of the sign see here it says fixer upper fixer upper and it is indeed let's go back up now Now, I was here recently, actually about a month ago, and the person I met here had a regular vehicle. It wasn't a truck, it wasn't a 4x4, and they had no problem getting up and down the steep section here. But of course, I would always recommend that you get a truck for the country. It is critical. So we're making our way back up. Excuse me. Good exercise, sir. Amen. God bless you. Very nice neighbor. That's all. That's always a plus. Always a plus. And again, the seller did tell me that the two or three neighbors on this road are extremely nice people. Praise the Lord.
Again, I'm trying to talk less and let nature do the talking for me. Yes. Oh, yes. Speak to us, Lord. How much nicer is this than to be surrounded by skyscrapers? Oh, it is, it is lovely. Praise Jesus. Okay, once again, if you're just tuning in, we're walking up the driveway of this property. This segment tonight, of course, is entitled Rape That Country Property. And we've already been around the open portion, the clear portion of the land. It's 28 acres. About half, I'd say, maybe 55% is wooded. The rest is quite clear. And the area right around the home here, as you can see, is primarily wooded. Okay. So I'm going to rock around as far as the obstacles and the trees will allow me. You can see the underneath portion of the home. See the subfloor there, etc. The plumbing, which is not completed. I understand that the the seller basically built this himself brick by brick. Not to go into too much detail, but the husband actually is deceased. He passed away uh, earlier this year, which forced the widow to have to sell the property. Yes, very nice, very nice. As you can see it is it is unfinished, quite unfinished. This area here was being prepared. You can see the open space here underneath. It was going to be a cistern that was going to be put down here. And I believe they were going to put a room of something on top. And the cistern was going to be below. Okay, let's make our way back around. And I'm going to we're going to go inside, take a look before we wind down. Just to review, four bedroom, two bath house, 28 acres, rolling hills, very wooded, very cleared, partially cleared. Half, about half of the property is cleared, half wooded. The plat map shows a sort of a triangular shape property. I'll be sharing that with you a little later. Okay, everything is a little damp, so I want to walk very gingerly and judiciously as I make my way to the stairs here. Keep in mind, everything is temporary because the home is unfinished. Okay, here we go. So please disregard the condition again. It is unfinished, it is incomplete. It is a fixer-upper, but as you can tell, the walls are up, the roof is up, ceiling is incomplete, the walls are incomplete, the outer walls are, are complete. 
but the inner walls, sectioning off the bedrooms, restrooms, etc., aren't done yet. You see he has a bunch of fiberglass here that he planned on putting up in the ceiling area. If you are a contractor, or if you're contractor-minded, or know a contractor, or know someone who may know a builder, this could probably realistically be completed, I'm sure, within, within two months or less. This is one of the bedrooms here. And this is, I believe, another bedroom here. Hmm. Got a nice sized dead spider there. Oh, that's country living, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, let's continue our little tour. That's facing the front door I just came through. Got some windows here. This is another bedroom, it appears. Yes, well actually it's a, it's a bathroom. It's partially plumbed, as you can see. Window facing out to the back of the home. I love the surrounding area right around the property, right around the house, very nice. I would be inclined to maybe cut some of these trees back. Inspiration does tell us that we shouldn't have trees too close to the property because of the collection of mold in and around the house and maybe underneath the house and because of the falling leaves. But that's, that's something that could be easily done with the trees that are right up against the home and they're, they're, they seem to be, they're very thin in nature, so. Okay, got a bathroom here. It's like a full bath, tub, shower, etc. Again, just kind of quickly doing a walkthrough here so you can get an idea of where they are as far as the building and the completion, how much work is left. And I would, I would ask you to not look so much at what you see now, but the potential, the potential. Great potential. Just need somebody to come in, give it a little TLC, and clean it up, and fix it up, and finish it up. Amen. So once again, we got four bedrooms, two bath, 28 acres, incomplete property, incomplete house. There'd have to, of course, be an estimate done as far as the amount it would cost to finish the building of the home to complete it. I don't have an esti estimate, so I can't give you one. The seller doesn't have an estimate, but I'm sure that's something that could, that could be obtained very easily. Okay? Amen. Now, the seller did tell me about this very nice spring head that the, neighbor, the neighbors, the community around, they all come here and use it. Can you see that? There it is. I'm gonna walk on over to it. I would say if I had to guess, it's maybe three miles, maybe three miles from the property. She said they come here and they fill up their jugs and their tanks and their water bottles and their cisterns and I guess those who don't have wells at home try to utilize it. Now of course the property we're talking about here does have a well, but this is always I guess a secondary option for water. Let me fill up this bottle and see what it tastes like.
Okay, let's give it a taste test. Mmm. Very good. Very nice. Amen. So another perk, another, I guess you could say a, a water source option, if needed. God's clean, fresh, pure water from under underground. And it's very tasty, very nice. Amen. Let's rate it. So Saints, this land, this property is very interesting to me. Again, located in the state of Kentucky, 28 acres, which is plenty of land. And most of you probably are aware of the fact that you can feed actually a family of four on one acre for a year. So 28 acres is plenty of space. If the Lord ordains or if he impresses you or if he entrusts you with a property with that much land, perhaps God has another plan in store that you can't see. I know that in a lot of instances, that much property can be used to greatly forward the gospel because land, brothers and sisters, is a commodity. Land is valuable. Land equals money. And of course, we don't mean money in a worldly sense as far as piling up treasure here on earth. We're talking about being able to, to use the land and utilize it to maximize it to be able to further God's gospel work for his kingdom. Amen. So <clears throat> the land is plentiful, plenty of open space uh, to plant your garden, an orchard, etc., even maybe a mini farm. Plenty of, of, of cases there with that. Uh, there are two neighbors that I'm aware of that are on either side of the property going up a, a little bit of a ways, maybe a quarter of a mile one way and a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile the other way. This is a, a, a positive because the seller has informed me, again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that these neighbors are very friendly, very helpful, and very conscientious of being nice and kindly and very nice neighbors to live near. So that's always, always a plus because we know, of course, based on the spirit of prophecy, at some point our neighbors will be our greatest enemies and may even one day want to kill us. So it always helps. And again, you have to consider the trust factor as far as trusting God. If he puts you there, if he puts you there, more likely than not, you're going to be protected if you're obedient. Amen. So what we did was we took the trouble and the time to go through some specifications, some specs, as far as this particular property is concerned. Now, we didn't do this for every property because we don't have time. Time won't allow tonight. But we'd like to get into a little detail about this property, uh, what's involved as far as the indications and the, the specifications and the, 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 the proximity of different things that are important. Let's take a moment and go through that list right now. Again, we're not going to do it for every property, but just for this one. So number one, the price. The price, again, in my opinion, this property is a steal. Contact us by email if you want more information on that. The price, number one. Number two is for sale by owner. So usually when the property is being sold by the owner themselves, they're going to be a lot more flexible in their negotiation. They're not as motivated by the money as a realtor, again, with all due respect, as a realtor may be. The realtor, of course, is seeking commission. So the seller many times will carry a note. Uh, they're willing to come down on the price quite a bit, so that's also a plus factor. This particular town is a very, very small town. Population is 786 people. The population density for this town is 25 people per square mile. Again, very low population, only a small amount of people. That fits the criteria. Must have elbow room. Amen. The county that this property is located in also, very low population density. 33 uh, people per square mile, very low. Plenty of elbow room. You can walk outside and no one is going to see you, and vice versa. Amen. Again, friendly neighbors. The seller told us that the neighbors to the left and to the right, about a quarter of a mile away one way and maybe half a mile away the other way, are very friendly, very conscientious of her. They were very nice and very helpful and very cooperative. That's always a plus. That always helps. Again, we don't know the future, but more times than not, when the Lord puts you in a situation where your neighbors are in somewhat of close proximity, he's going to have a situation where they're, they're nice neighbors. Because if he puts you there, he has a reason for you to be there. Perhaps he's going to use you to witness to these people, and they'll end up turning and opening their hearts to the truth. Amen. Only God knows. Only God knows. Number four, there are actually caves. There are caves in the vicinity very close to this property, and I didn't know this at all. I wasn't aware of the fact that Kentucky has the largest network of caves in this country. 
I, I think that's very interesting considering what we're going to be doing, what I believe in the very near future, as far as being able, being or needing to have to get out of these country homes and flee to more isolated and secluded areas. That's a very interesting point. This property has a very nice long driveway. You saw that as I walked back and forth. It is off the road. You can't really see the, the house uh, from the road. That's a positive. This road is very rarely traveled. I only saw two cars while I was there. They were both uh, neighbors. One neighbor, and when I say, say neighbor, again, Saints, I'm not talking about a neighbor or a home right next door. But this one particular neighbor was looking for his dog who had run off. So he was driving up and down the road for a reason. So it is very rarely traveled, and that is important. Again, 28 acres, plenty of space, good seasonal rainfall. The rains there are quite often. There's an abundance of trees there for wood, for heat, and for cooking. Again, the three major sources, resources you need in your country property. A heat source, a food source, of course, and a water source. So this place had plenty of wood and trees for cooking. It also had hay on the land, so you have a built-in industry right there. You can bring in a little, a little income every year with the hay there, your, your own little hay farm. Praise the Lord. Again, an abundance of clear space for multiple gardens, maybe an herb garden, veggie garden, fruit tree grove, etc., orchard, etc., uh, amen. The property is 27 minutes, a 27-minute drive to the nearest Walmart. 19.8 miles away is the closest Walmart Supercenter, number one. Number two, a 42-minute drive to the nearest Home Depot, which is 30 miles away. So this home is, is, is pretty isolated, I would say, based on those, those distances. Pretty isolated, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a positive. 45-minute drive to the nearest Lowe's Home Improvement Center, 31.1 miles away from this home. And the nearest interstate to this home, <coughs> excuse me, which happens to be Interstate 65 in Kentucky, is a 45-minute drive from this property. Louisville, Kentucky has a Whole Foods Market, a Trader Joe's, and basically everything else you'd need because it is a large city. It has a well and a septic tank, always a plus. There's a community spring there, and you saw on the video that I actually took time to drink out of it, and the water was very soft, and it was very clean, and it was very good, very good. And of course, there's an unfinished home on the land already. So again, a home that's been partially put up. It would be upon you and your family to finish the completing of this, of this property, of this house on this property. So brothers and sisters, again, it's a good situation. I like the property. It's located in a good situation. Uh, you heard all the specs. They're all very positive. I think on a scale of 1 to 10, again, considering the, all the aspects and all the, the details and all the factors, on a scale of 1 to 10, I will give this home a very strong 7. A strong seven next property okay brothers and sisters we are entering the property this is an 18 acre property and there's nothing on it but a sort of a oversized what we like to call a lean-to a storage place to be able to store hay as you can see in the in the distance there but I'm gonna drive around I'm not even gonna take the time to get out I'm gonna just drive around the property it's 18 acres it appears to be a beautiful very nice piece of property it has trees it's mostly clear as I can as you can see and as I'm seeing here also <clears throat> I'm just going to drive around and give you an, a point of view from the vehicle wide open space plenty of space here to build a home or two or three again 18 acres and I understand that there is no well on the property that could always be added later a well can always be dug at a later time but I understand that it does have 
power, county power, electricity, there's a pole, uh, the entrance on one of the roads to the property. So I'm gonna just kind of drive around here and give you an idea of what's here, what it looks like. There you see the lean-to over there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on that. You can get a better idea what that looks like. There it is. Okay. Okay, as the sun is setting here, I'm gonna drive over here to the corner so you can get another point of view. Now this piece of property, and what I'm really trying to do with you all is I'm trying to give you some perspectives on what to look for and what not to look for. And what I call green flags and red flags. Of course, the green flags are good and the red flags are negative. So I want to park right here. I want to stop. I'm going to point the camera directly at that road there, what appears to be a road. And we're going to sit here for a minute or so and see how many cars or vehicles we count that go by. Because there was one. You just saw one. And this will give you an indication of whether this is a prime piece of property or not based on the Council of the Lord, the Spirit of Prophecy criteria. So we've been here, sitting here now about 20, 25 seconds. There's a second vehicle that just went by. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can get a closer shot. So we just saw two vehicles in 30 seconds. There's another. That's three vehicles in about 35 seconds or so. Now, if we, that's basically an average of one vehicle for every 10 seconds. I have a question for you, and there's another one going the other direction. Is that a good average? Is that a green flag, or is that a red flag? There's another one. So now we're talking about five vehicles in less than a minute. Five vehicles have passed by in less than one minute. Is that a good sign, or is that a bad sign? Here comes another one. That's six vehicles now in about a minute. And I hear another one coming. Let's see. Actually, I hear more than one. There's another one. Pick up with a, with a trailer on the back. Horse trailer, looks like. So that's seven. Here's an 18-wheeler. Lay's potato chips. That's eight. There's a van. That's nine. Brother, sister, I think you get the picture here. There's our 10th vehicle, and I'll just round it up and say about two minutes. We've seen 10 vehicles go by. So is that a good sign or a bad sign? Is that a red flag or a green flag? Well, I think it's clear it's a red flag. This road, so-called, or bypass or highway is far too busy for you to even consider this property. A nice piece of property, it's mostly cleared. It has trees, somewhat. We're gonna take a look at the plat map in a few minutes. I want to continue driving around it, but brother, sister, it's, it's clear here. The lesson is, it's just too busy. It's just too busy. It's in an area, it's, it's located in a place where there's just too much activity going on here. It's on a very, very busy road, and that, that is not in God's order. I'm going to drive around, continue, and I'm going to be careful here. It looks like a couple of big dips. Again, nice land. I spoke to the realtor and the seller is very motivated, which means that they are very flexible and ready to negotiate. Perhaps drop the price a thousand here, a few thousand there, five, ten thousand here or there. But in this case, and here's the lean to I mentioned for hay storage, etc. In this case, Saints. This is not a prime, it may be a prime piece of property, but the location is very unprime. And you see several more vehicles passing, going both directions, in this case, east and west. So what may look good on the surface, what may appear to look nice on the plat map or on the survey, once you get to the, lo or on the, on the internet, different websites you look at, all the websites we've mentioned in past webinars, once you get to a property and see it face to face, 
you get a much better idea regarding whether it's in God's order or not. In God's order or not. Amen? Let's rate it. Now, brothers and sisters, this one is pretty much a no-brainer. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of extra time rating this one. As you saw, the property is located on a very busy, very, very busy road, pretty much a bypass. We saw several trucks go by, several vehicles go by in a very short period of time. It's located on, a, on an intersection. Uh, the land is clear. The land was beautiful. It was very nice. Again, no trees there for the most part, no trees. So, again, it's not really going to take a lot to, to, to rate this one. I think you all know where I'm going with this. Uh, for some people that aren't looking for the things we're looking for is God, as far as God's room, the church is concerned, it might be a great opportunity. But we have specific laid out details from the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy. So we have to be a little more discriminating in our choices. So, again, on a scale of 1 to 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this property a zero. A zero. Next property. Okay, so we're at another property now. And I'm videotaping and the owner is here, so I won't be as vocal as normal. But I will tell you that it is off of a back, back, back road, meaning that it is a probably, probably very rarely traveled road. And I'm aware of this area. I'm familiar with it. So I'm walking up the driveway now. If you want to call it a driveway. It's unpaved, obviously, and it is 29 acres and partially cleared. It has two wells and two septic tanks. And there are a couple of buildings on the property that the owner tells me he's going to have removed. So this area here where we're walking is most of the cleared area here. And again, these, both these structures are going to be removed, correct? Everything you see will be removed. There's a small shed there. Okay. And it's junk. Everything, okay. There's a small barn over here. Okay. That's junk. See that? So all these structures that we see on film right now are going to be eliminated. Yeah. Okay. And the two vehicles. Okay. And this is one of the wells here. The other one you will not be able to see okay it's it, when we came past the creek there's a there's a path that goes on the side of the creek and it's back okay at um the edge of the property okay no problem it has not been used it, it, they really were just, they were just told when they bought it this was 20 something years ago when they bought it okay and it is over there i have over there. okay so we're going to walk a little just to get an idea of the clearing. This is plenty of space to build a nice size home on. Obviously, he he didn't really take care. Of, they they didn't take care of it. It was him and his uh, wife and his two sons. Okay. And they didn't really take care of it. Okay. Very well. But that's that's trash. Okay. Understood. Would you be able to, if you had to give an, a guesstimate, how long it would be before you would have those uh, those structures removed? Uh, um, roughly. Hard to say, yeah. It, well, yeah. Within it'll a year? Be before, it'll be before the end of, before the beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Next so, year. near history. Yes, sir. I mean, sorry, near future. future. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, nice walking trail. This is, this is what they planned on doing when they had it, mm -hmm. is uh, clearing more of this. That way, this would be the drive. Right. And there's a, a clear spot up here. Okay. But most of it is this. Okay. Watch that anthill. There's a lot of lava. Say again? There's a lot of lava. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. They were here first, right? Mm -hmm. It's a nice trail. My dad, he lives in Florida. My parents live in Florida. He uh -huh. lives up in the park. Okay. It's just right up here. It's not probably far. Okay. This 
would be one of the more flat spots. Okay. If you wanted to do something. Yes, sir. All right. This could be almost a secondary home area, maybe home site. Mm -hmm. Back here. Okay. I love this walkway. Does that go all the way to the end of the, the property? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. There's a lot of these to watch out for these. I see. Whew. That might hurt a little, huh? Mm -hmm. And these are black walnuts yes. down here on the, on, the, on the ground. Okay. I can tell a lot of the foliage is gone because of the this time of year, huh? Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice up here. Yeah. This is very nice. <clears throat> it's, it, don't, the thing is, it's not a lot of usable land. I understand. But a lot of wood, which is good for those who want to use their own wood for burning, you know, mm -hmm. firewood or maybe a wood cook stove and the majority so the if you have to guess 29 acres you're talking about what maybe 24 acres wooded yes sir. give or take Probably. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> from here it gets a lot thicker okay I see a deer running by all right this is this is the, the part that goes all the way up to the top. Okay. This is just where my dad has a, a deer stand. Okay. I'm going to walk over and get this in and start walking back. Well, we, yeah, we don't need to walk up that way. We can. Okay. I'll take you. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it's an interesting little clearing right here. <clears throat> Here oh, you do this. Yes. Okay. Okay. It would take some work, but it's it's not a bad piece of land. It's just not very usable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are looking for land like this. Believe me, they are. All right. Not well. Let's see. The creek is probably 150 yards down. Okay. That well is probably 200 yards over. Okay. So just to repeat, two wells and two septics. Correct? Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. And one well is brand new or unused? One hasn't been used in over 25, 30 years. Okay. The other one, it's a, it's a bit iffy. Okay. And you haven't listed this or anything, right? You're just kind of it's for sale by owner. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're a little flexible. Yes, sir. Okay. This is really nice. Well, <clears throat> pretty much all of it is like this, uh -huh. like wooded like this, and it's, it's not hard to walk through. There's a there's a, a lot of rock mm -hmm. on that side, and it's kind of stepped down. Okay. There's some on this side too. Okay. It's a, it's a really nice piece of property. It's just not not a lot of wood. Yes, sir. You all right?
So you created this pathway with your uh, your mower, or you at least keep it cleared. Well, yeah, but okay. The, the, the little road they used to have is right there. Okay. But it's 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 grown up. Okay. They used to be able to drive a vehicle all oh. the way up. To the top. All right. We walked a long way, didn't we? Okay. Awesome. All right. Nice and quiet. Yes, sir. You take a shortcut? And the possibility of one of these being restored, zero? <laughs> Uh-oh, really? Okay. I understand. I would say, I would say zero. Okay. No, we just... Meter's off. Hmm? The meter's off. Uh, is it? I don't know. Oh. I was checking to see if I saw any movement. Yeah, it's not moving at all. Okay. Be, be, probably be easier just to start all over, huh? That's, that's why I was just knocking over to get the stuff out of here. Gotcha. I understand, sir. If he would have taken care of it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Take your word for it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yes, sir. Let's move in tonight. No, no. Okay. But there is another power pole. Mm -hmm. All right. With, with all of this mess being off of here, it would look really nice. I know it will. I know it will. I can tell. Great potential. Great potential. All right, I'm going to shut it down. Let's rate it. Oh, brother, sister, this is a great opportunity for some family out there who's languishing in the city and praying and begging God to take them out. I am fired up about this one. This situation is, is, is crystal clear in terms of the great potential it has. 29 acres. The young man, as he was talking to me, I was trying not to show my enthusiasm, but this situation is, is prime. He has two mobile homes on there that he's going to have removed himself very, very soon. 
the person the land is already cleared in terms of where you would have your home either built as we saw by the examples in the Bible earlier Jacob gave us an example also brother Jeremiah <clears throat> excuse me as far as building your home the land is already cleared for that about an acre or so maybe a little bit bigger but that's more than enough that you would need to put a home there uh, number two there's a number three there's a running creek there as you can see a running creek that runs right along kind of the border of the property and I understand it's not year-round as far as running is concerned but there's still great potential there for maybe a, a, a power source per se and other situations you could utilize that water for now this is a steel again I'm not going to talk about price here on camera but this is a steel and you may want to consider this one in terms of taking a very close look at it again many many Saints I know aren't really excited about buying land without a home on it but I know many are and many of the brothers out there are builders and contractors and they know builders and contractors who assist them who will help them in putting their home on this property so again 29 acres plenty of plenty of trees two wells and two septics on the land already there and you cannot see the land or the area where the home would be placed or built from the road it's not there I know this area relatively well it's a very quiet extremely quiet area so on a scale of 1 to 10 brother sister I am going to give this property a strong solid 8 I give it a strong 8 next property good evening once again brothers and sisters other in the church we are approaching another property now that's for sale that's available in the country we are now in the state of Tennessee and I'm approaching about about a mile from the from the property in question once again I'm trying to give everyone a little perspective on the the landscape approaching the property so you can get kind of a rough idea of how it feels and it is very nice out here got some homes on the left we got clear land on the right as you can see and we'll be coming up on the property in just a few seconds here again we're located this time in the state of Tennessee and this is a piece of property with no home on it it is actually all land and I know that a lot of Saints are in a position where they love to be able to purchase land only and be able to put a home on there either already constructed modular manufactured etc or have a site built home where they're building the home and putting it on the property them themselves so I'm turning on to the property now now if you have your country living radar up you should notice right away a big big red flag this is a driveway and there's a home right here to our right right next to the driveway that should tell you something that should tell you that this is a shared driveway it's what's known as an easement and that is not good but we're going to go ahead and go on in so you can get an understanding of what not to look for this is very important it's critical looks like a secondary building here some type of an, an industrial building here's an old barn here and we're going to drive on through put the four-wheel drive on and I'm going to proceed with caution now this is a nice building here on the left very nice nice building looks like it's maybe 20 feet by 75 maybe and here's a little little structure over here to the right maybe a grandmother's or mother-in-law quarters at one time but brother sister there's an issue here and the issue is the easement but we're going to go on up I'm going to continue through this beautiful land here beautiful beautiful here's the adjoining or the next door property see cows up on the hill there and very nice house here over to our left you see that nice pasture land over here to our right very very nice I'm going to go through a second gate here I'm not going to go too far onto the property I'm going to get out and kind of pan around a little bit I understand the owner here is in his upper high 80s and he's he's very ill an Alzheimer's situation he hasn't had a time to take care of the the condition of the shrubs and a lot has grown up 
they tell me, the realtor tells me it's been about two years since he's had a chance to actually come out here and keep the, the, the shrubs and the, the foliage down low. So it's pretty much grown up. I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna take a second, and I'm gonna get out. Again, I don't wanna go too far in. But I'll go in a little bit further. I'm gonna get out and we can talk about this just for a second. Just for a second. Now from what I've been told, the situation is with this land is very nice. 59 acres. 59 acres. And it has a little bit of everything. Rolling hills, plenty of trees, open land for orchards, and plenty of space for farms and gardens. Go ahead and turn my motor off. So again, this is, this is a lot of land, 59 acres. Just to give you a little perspective, Saints, Disneyland, which is located in Orange County in Southern California, Anaheim to be exact, which is which was is, of course is a huge complex, gigantic amusement park. We all know about it. Disneyland actually sits on 47 acres, so this is more. Very quiet out here, very serene, very nice indeed. And the realtor tells me that this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of property. It has everything that you could need. And I know a lot of saints these days are even joining forces together where they are combining maybe one, two, three, maybe even four families, buying a large tract of land like this or larger and splitting it up among themselves and putting their homes on it and buying property. I actually know of a, of a brother and I won't go into too much detail about who he is and what state he's from, but I know a family that, <clears throat> excuse me, got together with a couple of other families we have the boundary here see the the tape up the ribbons up on the fence and over there on the tree got together with a couple of other families and bought some property in a particular state and they paid on it for a few years and the brother went ahead and moved to that state where the property was located i believe it was maybe 100 maybe 150 acres or so and the brother shared with me that he was turning onto the property one day this is before he had taken the time to, to actually put the house in or put the house up on the property. He didn't even break, hadn't even broken ground yet. And he said he heard some music coming from somewhere not far from where his piece or his lot or tract on the property was located. And we had a very good talk about that. I said, brother, that is not good news. That's why it's very important when you feel the Lord is impressing you to check out a particular place, a state, a particular county, a particular area, a particular region, you need to really do your homework and try to spend some time there. Off hours, on hours, day, night, weekends, as, as much as you possibly can. And that's another good reason for considering the possibility of the stepping stones of country living, which is of course renting, renting. And we talked about that just last night. So the brother was very perplexed. I was perplexed for him. We talked, we prayed. And if this particular person is playing this, and he said it wasn't just your typical average music. The person that was playing the music was playing it very loudly. May have been a teenager, may have been somebody maybe visiting just temporarily. Maybe the person was home and just playing the music just that day. Maybe the person plays loud music every day around that same time or maybe even at night. Maybe they're a musician. Maybe he's a DJ, disc jockey. Again, we don't know, but we have to do our due diligence and we have to do our homework and be sure that we're being led where the Lord wants us to be. Because if the Lord is in it, if he's opening the door, brother, sister, he will put you exactly where he needs you to be and it will be peace and quiet and serene and it will be by the blueprint. So again, this property, very nice, very large, 59 acres, and again, the realtor assured me that everything's here. And this is a great opportunity. However, however, the issue is that driveway. And that driveway is a serious issue. Just look at that hill over there behind the trees. Oh, that's very, very, very nice. Can you see that? That's very nice. 
And there's also, it looks like a structure here of some type, maybe some old barn or whatever. Let me go down a little further. But obviously, brothers and sisters, you know the situation with an easement where you have to share a driveway with a neighbor, a very close neighbor, and even though he's just a neighbor that's on one tiny portion of 59 acres, not even on the land per se, but the fact that you have to drive past this particular neighbor who could at some point in the future become an enemy in terms of the Sunday law. So that's something to consider. Again, the property is nice, but the entrance off the road, and from what I understand, it is the only way to get into this property. It's the only way in. So with that under consideration, saints, let's rate it. Now, saints, again, this is one of those situations, a property, where we say woulda, shoulda, coulda. Located on 59 acres, plenty of land. And as I mentioned earlier, just to give you a little perspective, Disneyland, located back in California, back in Southern California, located in Orange County, Anaheim, California, a huge amusement complex is seated on 47 acres. That's a lot of land. So 59 acres clearly is a lot of land. Plenty of trees for burning wood, plenty of cleared areas, plenty of rolling hills, very nice piece of property. We couldn't get to most of it because of the situation and uh, the, the, the circumstances involved in terms of traveling up and over hills and throughout wasn't really accessible but brother sister there's an easement there and if there's an easement there's going to be possible conflict influence interaction etc I can recall with our first country move in 2009 2010 we had a situation there and most of you have seen this where our neighbor who was first of all too close our driveways were set or situated right next to each other so again I'd see the man it seemed like on a constant basis either I was leaving and he was coming or he was leaving and I was coming either way there was always some interaction or contact there and that's with two separate driveways so you have a driveway which in this situation is considered an easement where you're sharing the driveway with a neighbor to get access to your property he's also using the same driveway to access his property there's going to be some issues there. At some point, there's going to be some issues, especially when the trouble begins, the time of trouble such as never was. So it has potential, but because of that big negative, that big strike, as far as the specs are concerned, again, brother, sister, this is a no-brainer. We have to give this one a low mark. On a scale of 1 to 10, we rate this property, again, a 0. We give it a 0. Next property. We are now at our fifth and final property for the evening, and I'm starting off driving about about a mile, maybe a mile and a half away from the actual designated property. If you notice, brothers and sisters, it's a little quiet in the background this time around, and there's a reason for that. There was real, really no real need to have the microphone on. I knew that the seller, the husband and the wife would both be in my presence for the most part during this tour, and I wouldn't be as free with my communication with you and the verbiage I would use as I normally would if I were alone. So the camera's not on, I'm actually narrating after the fact. So we're cruising down the road now, and as you can see a nice country road, making our way toward the property. And as you can see it's a very nice area and I'm fairly familiar with this area here. It is very, very quiet, very quiet. You see the trees, of course, on the right, and you see some open land on the left there. Everything is very green and grown up, and it's just a very nice area. So we're getting closer, and we're getting closer to the property. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking for this one. I'm going to kind of let the landscape, again, and the property speak for itself as I make my way up to the property and through the house and through the rooms and I'm going to pretty much just let us all kind of utilize a certain degree of common sense as we soak in and absorb the beauty of this area and also of this property. It's a very nice piece of property. I'm going to get into a little more detail about my opinion about it, of course, during the rate and review period. So we're coming closer now. Again, just cruising down this country road, kind of around the bend here and turning down the road 
that the property is actually located on. It's actually at an intersection. We're going to get into that a little bit a little later on. But the road here leading up to the property is a road that's off of a road. Of course, that is off of a road. And you can tell that it's a very narrow road, which is usually a, a very strong indicator of the immediate area at least being a low population density area when the road is very small, barely wide enough to fit two vehicles going opposite directions. So leading up to the home, you have the stone wall here leading up to the home or in front of or, or burying off uh, the actual property. And I'm about to turn into the property now. And I'm stopping and just making sure that I have the right address, which I do. And I'm going to go ahead and turn in. At this point, I believe I'm adjusting the camera. Now, just for those of you who may be tuning in late, I don't have sound on knowing that the seller's husband and or wife would be with me the majority of the time. So I wouldn't be as free with discussing certain aspects or details, either pro or con, plus or minus, negative or positive, about the given property. So I'm narrating actually after the fact. So pulling onto the property now, you can see there's a huge amount of cleared area here. It's actually 34 acres plus or minus. And the seller actually shared with me that it's actually on the high end above 34 acres. So maybe 35, closer to 36 or so. So you see me panning back and forth just to give you an indication of how much of the land is cleared. And there's the home. And I'm about to get out the truck now. So after meeting and greeting the sellers, I'm now walking through the home. This is one of the bedrooms of the home. The home actually has three bedrooms and two baths. And actually an area for a fourth bedroom if you desire to have that. So it's of course fully furnished. He hasn't moved out yet. He's planning on or the couple are planning on moving out once the home and the land are sold. He actually had about a hundred acres or so more than that actually and he sold off a few parcels of that land over the past several months and now he's looking to sell this final 34 or 35 acres or so along with the home and plenty of extra accessories that are going to go with that this man was very much into uh, farming he's been in the area for many years he has lots of things lots of industry related things on the land that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. This of course is the garage and again he's planning on moving out once he sells the property so everything is full, every room is furnished, the garage as you can see is full everything is stocked up and they've been living here for many many years. Little older couple, been retired but this man was a farmer and is still a farmer for many many years but he's basically retired for the most part now for the most part So I'm continuing, panning around the garage area, making my way back through the bedroom. And once again, I'm repeating for those of you who may have been tuning in late, I don't have sound on because the owner is basically right at my side, he and or his wife throughout the course of this tour of this property. So being a, being, not being able to be as free as I'd like to be with my communication with you, the microphone is off, so I'm narrating after the fact. So again, I'm going to allow the home itself to pretty much tell the story. This is the living room, clearly. And there's one of his many trophies, the deer. That's, that's a pretty common sight in country residences, the deer head on the wall. Many people in, of course, the rural areas are hunters, and they love to, to show off their prize victims, the deer. So there's the seller's wife. I guess she's a seller too, amen. This is the kitchen area and dining area. And you can see down the hall, this little short hallway here, there's a, one of the bathrooms. And I um, didn't mean to get myself on, 
on a camera in the mirror there, but this is a full bath with a bathroom and bathtub, and it's also, as you can see, equipped for a disabled individual with the bars and handles, etc. Now I'm making my way back out of the restroom, and this is a laundry room he has there, as you can see. Okay. Washer and dryer and hot water heater is in the same room as well. Same little area. Very nice size home. Now we're going to make our way upstairs. So it is a two level home. And there are rooms upstairs as well. Upstairs as well. And here's another bedroom here. Of course, still furnished, as I mentioned earlier. Again, just panning around the bedroom just to give you some perspective on the size and the potential that's here. And it, again, it has lots of potential. They've accumulated a lot of things, of course, over the years being an older couple, an elderly couple. So there are a lot of things that could be done with this, with this home. And lots and lots of things that can be done potentially with the exterior, with the outside, on the land. We'll get to that in a few minutes. There you see a nice closet, semi-walk-in closet. And this is, of course, another bedroom upstairs. All furnished, all full. So plenty of room for a family with children, obviously. And I even know situations where maybe two families are joining forces and are occupying the same home. willing to do whatever it takes to get to the country. Amen. Okay, back downstairs. And I'm going to make my way now outdoors, outside. And we're going to spend the rest of the tour of this property outside on the land. So, brothers and sisters, words don't have to express what you see, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of property. Just getting a shot of the, the rear of the home now, of the house itself, the exterior, and panning around so you can see how it looks on the back side. And again, be not deceived, 34 acres is a lot of land, plenty of land. He has a little place here where he can burn articles, maybe create a bonfire of, of sorts just to spend time outside maybe in the, the cooler months of the year as you see the benches are surrounding it and you can see the the farming structures for his industry in the background there we'll get to all those in just a minute there's this truck with a trailer and walking toward now panning back and I believe at this point I'm going to walk toward the fence so you can get a closer look at that wide area that has been cleared just to repeat those of you who may be joining late tuning in a little late <clears throat> the sound is off because the seller is with me most of the time and I'm not able to really communicate the way I I normally would so I'm narrating after the fact so this is a wide swath of the 34 acres here as you can see is completely cleared uh, he obviously plants on it during planting season I'm not sure what was on there it may have been corn it may have been soy I'm not sure but it's a lot of land to cultivate a lot of space 
So we're making our way now as I'm moving toward his farming utility buildings here. You can see all his toys here, his tractors and bush hog, etc. And he's open. He's open if the price is right. He's open to selling these things with, with the land, with the property itself. He's willing to include some of these, some of these uh, farming he calls toys. Now he's letting me into what he called his man cave, <clears throat> where he spends a lot of his free time, or I guess time, tinkering and building and modifying and fixing and repairing all of his various tools, etc. And again, just to give you an idea of what you could do with this area, if the Lord blesses you with this or, or a similar property. There you see his bike hanging there. And nice, looks like a some kind of a PA system and stereo and television monitor, etc. So these things are important. You you need to have somewhere where you can actually utilize some space to be able to to do things, to fix things, and work on things, and learn things. Maybe even teach being able to maximize the area that God entrusts you with. Moving out of the man cave now, walking toward another structure and there, of course, his farm equipment. There you see his golf cart. Many people in the country have these, either, either four-wheelers or golf carts to be able to get around on the property without having to drive your, your actual truck or your personal vehicle around the land. It's a lot easier and a lot faster to get around on a golf cart, something smaller that can navigate and get in tight spaces. So walking around now, making my way, just kind of checking things out. And he used this space here for many things over the years. So here he is letting me into another area, all of his, uh, his equipment and accessories for his horses and various farm animals and again some of his prized possessions, antlers and horns, etc. He's definitely a country, country man, a country boy. So walking back out now, and I really tried to get shots of every inch or as much as I could of this property because there's so much here and so much to offer. Again, I'll get into a little more detail when I'm alone during the rate and review period. Right now, just kind of letting the shots with the camera kind of speak for themselves. This is something he utilized just for storage and tools, etc. He said he may or may not leave this with the property to be with it. He hasn't decided. He just wanted to show that to us. So here's another building we're approaching. And the more buildings, the better. There's so many things you can do, especially if we're maximizing the opportunity to create an outpost center the more the better now this is a kitchen area obviously he told me he and his wife did canning lots of canning over the years and they use this area for many things of course cooking and canning and jarring and saving things and just utilizing the space he worked for years with his hands and everything he earned, he earned on his own, on the land. He lived, literally lived off the land. And you see his canning jars there, he and his wife's canning jars. And he, he was very unsure about whether he would be taking all these things with him or not. 
kind of in the valley of decision at this point. Another area here, mostly for storage, tools, etc. Again, I can't under or overemphasize or overstate the importance of having buildings or structures or rooms on your property. You can do so many things with them, including house people and modify and convert buildings like this to be able to house people who need somewhere to go or an area just to teach and share. Obviously a restroom here. Now his industry wouldn't necessarily be something that we would consider as far as our industry. He was into the, you know, the cows and the, the farm animals and the chickens and the eggs and all those things, cheese, etc. But what he did for what he did, he was very successful at it for a long period of time. There's a shot of the land, of course, through the window of this particular building here. And I believe, I got the impression from this man that he's, he's a very uh, motivated seller. He wants to sell. I mentioned in the opening that he sold off many of the uh, acres that were available. There were over a hundred. He had an auction and he sold, sold most of them, except for the 34 or 35 acres that are available now. For those of you who are tuning in late, I'm narrating this tour of this property after the fact. This is our fifth and final property. I'm narrating because of the fact that the seller is with me or has been with me throughout my entering the property. You can see him there. So I, I pretty much had the camera off, the sound off anyway, the microphone because I knew I wouldn't be able to express myself the way I normally do. Now this is an area here where he kept farm animals. This is an area where he actually milked cows, if I can recall correctly. And coming around here now, they, he had stalls here for various reasons, for again, for farm animals. So this man was a serious farmer. He was a very serious farmer. And just by the conversation we had during the time he was there, he definitely knows what he's doing. And again, he'd been doing it a long time. But he has property in another state, and his wife and he are retired for the most part, and he's ready to just go settle down and relax. So he's trying to unload this property. So again, just trying to give you an idea of what the property looks like, the land. This is another area over here where he actually farmed and cultivated and there was our fruit trees as you can see. You can see him pointing, he's showing them to me, to us. And I'm going to be walking down there in a second or two. But I love the tree line as well very nice so fruit trees and then an area there where he planted many or much so we begin walking down toward the, the fruit tree area 
down a slope here and what happens I slip and fall but brother sister that is country living that's country living so another gate here that we enter through and we're on our way so the fact that this man here cultivated this land and grew on this land and ate from this land for so many years the ground is very fertile and this could potentially be a great opportunity for someone or two or three families possibly but I'll get into that during the rating period so very very nice land very nice land here Of course, this is the rear of the structure we just walked out of. There's another piece of farm equipment. Again, he, he told me, name your price. If the price is right, you can keep it. He's to the point where he doesn't want to have to lug a lot of stuff with him when he does leave the area. Kind of wants to just pack his clothes and furniture and knickknacks and maybe some, you know, family mementos and leave. not going to be doing nearly as much farming as he had been doing over the years just a minimum amount so I think he wants to keep maybe one tractor and the rest of it is up for up for sale maybe to the highest bidder so I remember he was explaining something to me here regarding the type of uh, tree this was and he also mentioned that he's more than willing to help assist you in identifying what he planted where he planted it the types of foliage the types of trees what types of vegetation he planted where what does the best and what area on what area of the land he's willing to do that to share his ex his wealth of experience if you feel impressed to to move to this part of the country So we're making our way toward the edge or part of the edge of the property there's a creek a running creek over here we're gonna see that in just a second yes very nice a water source now he also tells me he has a, a well but he also has a nice creek here so that's always a plus having more than one water source is a great blessing maybe a source for hydroelectricity of course for drinking etc now I believe I believe this tractor is the one that he told me name your price the other ones we saw the orange ones I believe he wanted to keep and again just walk into another portion of the land to show the running creek beautiful very nice and not stagnant at all So just to repeat I know this area it is extremely quiet very quiet and that's in my opinion near the top of the list as far as prerequisites you won't hear any cars driving in this area blasting music you won't hear anyone blasting music out of their homes out of the windows of their homes it's a quiet area in the country
again a shot of that tractor and if I recall correctly I was showing this tractor because he was telling me that it was available he's willing to part with it for the right price so walking now back toward the open land going back toward the structures we're going to pass the gate that we entered and keep going I'm going to pass the portion where I slipped and fell now this area here in front of us that's that's cleared where he had all the uh, several acres of land cultivated and growing crops it's located actually at an intersection but the intersection is very quiet and this road again as I mentioned before is in a road that is a back 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 road meaning it is not really a, attached to a major artery or tributary per se but they are definitely country roads and you saw as I approached the property how narrow that road was again a strong indicator that there are not a lot of people at all traveling that road thus the narrowness of it by definition and by default so walking up now I'm actually now on the other side of the, of the fence here on the area where he basically plants and farms beautiful day in the country I just want you guys to really all of you just really kind of soak it all in the, the beautiful blue sky the crystal clean clear air all these things all these things speak to us without us even realizing it there's a reason the Lord wants us in this environment there are several reasons actually by beholding nature we will become imperceptibly changed into the same image into his image so we're walking now to another part of the land where there's another structure there as you can see and if you have children at all even nieces and nephews and or grandchildren plenty of places for them to roam around and play in safety and the children love it they love it and you guys all witnessed that of course last night the children love the country so this is another area here where he just keeps some of his farm stuff there's a rear time tiller and there's a push mower just all of these things are so important to have and to own once you get to the country or even start purchasing them of course as we discussed during our last webinar before you leave the city to get to the country just start to accumulate these things I know families that are buying a tool a month as they pray and ask the Lord to lead them to where he wants them to be they're preparing and they're purchasing things as time goes by before they make the move before the way before the Lord opens the way for them to make the move they're showing and acting in faith by purchasing these things week to week or month to month paycheck to paycheck they're buying and they're getting ready so again more buildings more structures he may have been utilizing them for one purpose that you can utilize these for another he may have had a chicken coop or different things he was using for these buildings you can modify them and use them for something else just to reiterate those of you who may be joining late I'm narrating now after the fact because of the fact that the seller the owner of this property is with me and because I won't be able to discuss things or couldn't talk the way I normally would or communicate the way I would normally share 
I'm talking now after the fact. But he was very gracious and showed me a lot and discussed a lot. And like I mentioned earlier, he's, he's motivated. He's very motivated. He has one horse left, and that's him. And of course he turns and looks right at me, right on cue. So I hope you can appreciate the size of this property. Again, 34 acres is a lot of land. There go his little guineas running away. Trees for wood, that's important, of course. And that's the road that I drove up on. And that is the rock wall. You get a chance to look up the history on those. There's definitely a history behind those walls that you see a lot of places around around the south not going to get into all that of course this evening but when you get a chance in your free time google it so this property clearly I don't have to sell it clearly has a lot of potential 34 acres beautiful home three bedroom he had an office up there so there's potential for four possibly maybe a smaller room for a child the landscape is beautiful the location is beautiful the area is very quiet you see hills in the in the background there it's a very nice, very nice piece of property with high potential for a family or two families, or even maybe even three, depending on your, your goals. Amen? Let's rate it. So my brothers and my sisters, I'm really liking this property. Very nice, as you could clearly see, very nice home, very nice field, very nice land, laid out very nice. Uh, the man obviously has been a farmer for many, many years. He had many industries he had developed and set up on that land, not necessarily what we as God's remnant people might be involved with as far as industries are concerned, of course, with the cows and the flesh meat and the chickens and the eggs and the cheese and the milk, etc. But nevertheless, plenty of space for you to develop some type of industry of your own to God's glory. I wasn't real crazy about the fact that a major portion of the cleared land was situated at an intersection. But I will bear in mind that it was a back, back, back road situation, meaning that these two roads weren't linked directly to a major, major thoroughfare or road. And again, no yellow lines on these roads. And of course, we know that yellow lines usually indicate or denote a slightly higher population density in that area by default. So I think the price is a little high. He talked to me about the price. I believe this land, based on what I saw, is a little pricey. A little bit pricey and I know I know that at this point in time many families multiple families are getting together joining forces and are buying property together to kind of alleviate and diminish the amount of money needed per family so based on the entire scene entire scenario 34 acres uh, source of water has trees quiet I know the area very very quiet area this is key brother sister this is key Based on all the above, I would rate this property on a scale of 1 to 10. I would give it a strong 7.5, a, a 7.5. Saints, that concludes tonight's segment of Rate That Country Property. I pray that you've been blessed by it. Tomorrow night, night number 5 in our webinar series, we have the truth about false education. The truth about false education. And remember, except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that build it. Let us pray. 
Blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for showing your people what they need to see. Father, there's so much involved in this process, but we know, Lord, we know that you are leading because you want us to be out of these cities, Lord. It is your desire. It is your will for your people. Please bless those who are continuing to search, Lord, with faith, with trust in thee, and that it is not their work. It is a cooperative effort between them and heaven. Please, Lord, grant us understanding and wisdom that only comes from above. And I pray that you would continue to bless those, Lord, who are striving to lead lives according to your complete will, that we all may be found prepared to stand in the day of battle. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.